Hi there, my name is Ron Rogers, and this presentation is titled, They Don't Make Satellites Like They Used To, and That's a Good Thing. You see this little thing I'm holding in my fingers? This is some of the electronic components that were on the Engine 5 satellite that was launched by the University of Iowa. We had Dr. James Van Ellen, and I actually operated this satellite. It was launched in 1968, 8 August of 1968, and it ceased operation in June of 1971. And basically, it ceased operation because we ran out of money uh, to keep uh, to keep the thing operating uh, to fund the various things that needed to be funding. And the the satellite had um, undergone some de degradation. And this is it here, a picture of it. The one on the left is before it was launched. Everything stowed in. The one on the right is what it would look like in orbit. Um, this is a drawing, of course. Nobody's up there taking pictures. This is what it looked like in orbit with all the um, booms extended for gathering the uh, scientific uh, data. But um, this, this was a uh, very interesting satellite, and I'll talk about uh, the Engine 5 series of satellites, the University of Iowa and that stuff, in, a, uh, in another video uh, presentation I'm putting together. Now, now again, here is the, the components. Uh, you know, you talk about how many thousands of transistors you can put on a chip. Well, this was a little, uh, and you saw the reference to my uh, thumb there, how big this was. This was a little uh, fiberglass wafered uh, set of components there. The green is a transistor, individual components. I'm not even sure if you can buy these anymore individually. The yellow arrow is a diode there, and the blue arrow points to resistors. And all you good electrical engineers out there, you probably can read the uh, values of these uh, right off the top of your head there. And of course, there's a little transistor on the end. The um, two things on the left that say engine five, uh, they later determined, yeah, maybe that wasn't the most politically correct term, and they called them Hawkeye uh, satellites after that. But these little tags would go on reels of tape, 15 inch reels of tape, half inch tape, uh, that they record the data. They ran about, I think, 15 inches a second. Uh, they ran pretty fast. And they had a room on the fifth floor that was just full of these, and they had to do a structural analysis because it was getting pretty heavy up there. But anyway, Anyway, they'd, like, they'd write the pass, the date, and all that stuff, and they'd put it on the, uh, the, uh, the tape there. And this is my girlfriend, fiance, uh, who's been my wife now for 52 years. The, uh, the blue arrow points to the reel-to-reel -reel tape machine, and she's standing in front of the uh, console that we use to operate the Engine 5 uh, satellite. Actually, level of her head there is the, uh, or slightly above it, is, is the, uh, the command uh, console. And there's kind of a funny story about how the, she thought she had destroyed the satellite one time. But anyway, moving on. All right, here are these little uh, uh, fiberglass wafered, you can see on, on the bottom right there, those are individual transistors, and we've got uh, up at the top, those are mechanical relays. Yeah, think about how reliable these things were. Uh, they're not like modern satellites with um, all the computer programming and... Uh, uh, modern fail-safe uh, type of things like that. In fact, we lost one of the engine satellites uh, due to, they think, a, a battery short from a bad command that uh, kind of destroyed the, the satellite. And here is, a, uh, a, here is another view of uh, the same thing. And here we go. This is a, a cluster of them on this board, and I'm, I'm backing out here, widening out, so you'll see the full thing. And this went part of the uh, Lepidia project uh, experiment. Uh, I believe that's standard for low energy particle electron differential analysis. Uh, Van Allen uh, discovered, quite a coincidence, the Van Allen radiation belts. And, and I'll talk about those uh, later. But this was one of... Uh, many of a stack of these, these things were stacked. You can see the holes there that went through alignment pins. And uh, about six or eight of these were stacked in a magnesium box that was um, machined out of a solid piece of magnesium uh, for strength and a lack of joints and things like that. And this is the underside. Look at those individual capacitors and resistors there and all the little wires attached. And here is a uh, box and detectors. Those are uh, Geiger counters and a, a scintillation detector that went on a uh, Mariner probe. 
And there's another view of it. And another view, and you can see the same sort of construction. And you know, this is back. Uh, this is built back in in the early '60s. On the uh, they had a, a group of uh, women who actually constructed these things uh, because supposedly they had better better manual dexterity for the type of soldering that needed to be done, and you had to pass a NASA qualification test uh, to be certified to solder for these things. And uh, that was on the second floor of the physics building, University of Iowa. Okay, you want to step just a little further back than that. Uh, these are the raccoons, and I've got a presentation about that. This was uh, Dr. James Van Ellen's uh, first Fourier, and I'll, I'll talk about that in the, uh, the next slide here. But uh, as far as interesting components, you see the blue arrow there. That goes to a weight. And uh, that little uh, brown dot there, that's actually one of these little rotary switches like you'd have on a lamp. I mean, they went to the hardware store to get these parts. And the deal was uh, this thing, and they use kitchen timers. This thing was carried up in a balloon to 70,000 feet, and then it was, uh, it was fired. Um, and when the motor fired, that's when you wanted to turn the electronics on. So uh, that little weight uh, was pulled down by the acceleration, and it turned the switch on, and it started the rocket functioning. In, interesting, huh? Yeah, sophisticated. The uh, green arrow points to a little uh, light sensor, uh, goes into the tube there. Yeah, photocell. Look at the size of that thing. It was a tube. And that ro that detected rotation rate, you know, light, dark, light, dark sort of thing. So you could see if the thing was spinning, because some of these kind of had a um, uh, method of determining orientation. And the yellow uh, arrow there, that goes to a vacuum tube. And there's a little, uh, it's held in place by a little piece of phenolic and uh, screws and bolts there so it wouldn't come loose. So um, anyway, uh, that's, uh, that's some of the, the old technology that was employed. And there's Dr. James Van Allen holding one of the raccoons. Um, and I worked for him uh, in various capacities, and I came across in the storage room, now we see it on the left, a couple of these. They had about 30 of them that I guess they never ended up firing from the North Sea. And I was asking him about them, and he told about them, and, you know, they were just, you know, ancient history sort of things. And I said, well, uh, would you mind if I had a couple of them, you know, since, since you've got all these extras? And he goes, sure, take, take what you want. So they were kind of two different types, and I'll talk about those in, a, in another presentation. But now let's fast forward to more modern times. All right, look at that. Look at all those little chips, integrated circuit components there. And remember this? This is what it used to be. It's so old it's in black and white, I know. Individual res resistors, capacitors, and that. Now here's a more modern day configuration in the box. Uh, now this is a, a main a computational type of box here. And it's got some larger components for power supplies and stuff like that. But it's, uh, it's much more sophisticated. And again, here's another one with the integrated circuits and the surface uh, components there all mounted. And there's how it used to be in the olden days. So things have come along a really long ways. Uh, they've gotten much more sophisticated, much more reliable, much more damage tolerant. Uh, the failure rate in the olden days was very high. Uh, not only of the rockets, but also of the components and the satellites themselves. So I hope you enjoyed this, and I'm going to go into more detail in uh, future presentations about the Raccoon Project and the, uh, the engine uh, series of uh, satellites that were operated by the University of Iowa back in the um, 60s and 70s. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it.